Waterloo was positioned to be a strong computing centre in the 1960s in part through serendipity, uh, in that the timing was just right. Waterloo was well positioned in the early 1960s, having been through a few generations of hardware, now the focus really was on applications. Uh, Ralph, Stan and Wes Graham were absolutely key to the development of computer science here. They were complementary. Wes had been hands-on with IBM, so he was the guy who made it happen, if you will, and Ralph brought in the good students to support the program. We had invited Bill Davis, who was Minister of Education at the time, down here to give a talk, and at the end of the talk, he said, oh, by the way, I just signed a piece of paper this morning that gives you Waterloo a building and a computer. And of course, the room erupted. That's really put us on the map. It was an incredible commitment, considering how many students are working at the University of Waterloo. Canada's largest computer, we didn't have 10,000 students. I think the Red Room really was quite important in a way that's a little hard to understand now, because at the time, great big mainframes were a very important part of computing. In fact, they were the, the main thing in computing. And at the time the math building was built, we were able to acquire a really large mainframe computer, and the Red Room was where it was essentially on display as well as working. And so people could come by and see this, at the time, really marvelous tool that we'd acquired, and that gave visibility to something that otherwise might have been kind of hidden away. The University of Waterloo Computer Museum has a number of really interesting artifacts in our collection. We try to focus on things that are immediately relevant to what's happened here at the university. Uh, so we have the first computers that we used here. We have panels from an IBM 1620, an IBM System 360. We have computers that were essentially created here in the 1970s and 80s. There was something called a microwatt, which has effectively disappeared from history but remains important because it really helped us, it really helps us today understand how computer science is taught. I think what's kept us at the forefront hasn't been any single thing other than an ability and a willingness to grab onto things that come by. So that when the opportunity for the new Oxford English Dictionary Project came along, uh, when we saw an opportunity for uh, computerized algebra that led to Maple and so on, various individual projects were things that people within the school or the department at the time were willing to grab onto them and rather than some grand plan that we would do this in the 1970s and this in the 1980s, I think it's that willingness to pursue new things that's really kept us at the forefront. We set a very, very strong motivation for people to come here and they're still coming. And of course now we have a very strong reputation in mathematics and computer science and it builds on itself.